What's going on today, YouTube? Rob here. In today's video, I'm going to be doing another deck profile for you. This is my take on the brand new War Rock archetype. I made this deck as pure as possible. There, even though there are only seven War Rock cards, that's all we really have. Um, it's just pure warriors, pure War Rock monsters, and again, I tried to make this as pure as possible. This is what I came up with, and I hope you guys enjoy. Before we get started, I just want to say, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for more fun Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. And without wasting any more of your time, let's get into it. Alright guys, let's get into this War Rock deck profile. So, first off, we're going to start with triple copies of War Rock Basilios. This is like your big boss monster for the deck. This card's effect reads as follows. During a battle phase in which your earth warrior monster battles, quick effect, you can activate this effect and it's this card can attack directly this turn. Also, all war rock monsters you currently control gain 200 attack until the end of your opponent's turn. And while this card is in your hand or graveyard, when your Earth Warrior monster is destroyed by battle, you can special summon this card but banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use each effect of War Rock Basilios once per turn. Next up, we have three copies of War Rock Fortia. Once again, if your Earth Warrior monster battles, after damage calculation, you can add one War Rock card, not just monster, from your deck to your hand except for War Rock Fortia. Then all War Rock monsters that you currently control gain 200 attack until your, the end of your opponent's turn. And if this card is sent from your monster zone to the graveyard by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon one level 5 or higher War Rock monster from your hand or deck, and you can only use each effect of War Rock Fortia once per turn. Next up, we have three copies of War Rock Orpus. If you control no monsters, or all monsters you control are warrior monsters, you can normal summon this card without tributing. And if your Earth Warrior monster battles, after damage calculation, you can send one Earth Warrior monster from your deck to the graveyard, except for War Rock Orpus. Then all War Rock monsters that you currently control gain 200 attack until the end of your opponent's turn. And you can only use this effect of War Rock Orpus once per turn. Next up, we have three copies of War Rock Skylar. This card gains 100 attack for each monster that your opponent controls, and during a battle phase in which your Earth Warrior monster battles quick effect, you can target one level 5 or lower monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Also, all War Rock monsters that you currently control gain 200 attack until the end of your opponent's turn. Also, for the rest of this turn, you cannot attack directly with level 5 or lower monsters. And you can only use each effect, or this effect of War Rock Skylar once per turn. Next up, we have three copies of War Rock Gactos. Again, if an Earth Warrior monster is normal summoned to your field, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card is sent to the from your monster zone to the graveyard by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon one level 5 or higher War Rock monster from your hand or deck. You can only use this effect of War Rock Gactos once per turn. And lastly for our monsters, we have three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring just as part of your hand trap lineup. So again, when a card or effect is activated that includes any of these effects, 
quick effect, you can detach this card or discard this card and negate the, that effect. So either adding a card from the deck to the hand, special summoning from the deck, or sending a card from the deck to the graveyard. And you can only use the effect of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring once per turn. That's it for our monsters. This is as pure as I could possibly make this deck. Um, let's move on to our spells. First and foremost, we have three copies of Pot of Extravagance. This variant of the deck, although it has an extra deck, does not rely on the extra deck whatsoever. So it's great to have Pot of Extravagance, which allows you at the start of your main phase, or at the start of your main phase one, I should say, you banish three or six random face down cards from your extra deck face down and draw one card for every three cards banished and for the rest of the turn after this card resolves you cannot draw any other cards by card effects. Then we have one copy of terraforming. This allows you to add a field spell from your deck to your hand. You don't necessarily have to play this card, I just kind of have it in here to have quicker access to our field spell. Uh, next, we have three copies of Reinforcement of the Army's Troops. This allows you, when an attack is declared involving your warrior monster, you can special summon one level 4 or lower warrior monster from your hand. And you can only use this effect of Reinforcement of the Army's Troops once per turn. Next up, we have three copies of War Rock Ordeal. You can only control one War Rock Ordeal, and when this card is activated, place three counters on it. And when your War Rock monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to their graveyard, you can remove one counter from this card, and if you do, you draw one card. And if the last counter has been removed by this effect, send this card to the graveyard. This is a really good way to be able to just gain some extra advantage and some extra draw power. Uh, so I'm maximizing it by playing it at 3. Lastly, for our War Rock cards, we have three copies of War Rock Mountain. This is our field spell. Uh, so when this card is activated, you can add one War Rock monster from your deck to your hand. And at the start of the battle phase, if you control no monsters or all monsters you control are warrior monsters, you can special summon one War Rock monster from your hand with a different name than the cards that you currently control. And if your warrior monster would be destroyed by battle, you can send this card to the graveyard instead. And you can only activate one War Rock Mountain per turn. Next up, we have the one copy of Monster Reborn, which allows you to target a monster in either player's graveyard and special summon it. Then we have the one copy of Harpy's Feather Duster, which allows you to uh, destroy all spell and trap cards your opponent controls. And lastly, again, you don't have to play this card, it can be anything else. Um, but we have one copy of Reinforcement of the Army, which allows you to add a one level four or lower warrior type monster from your deck or hand, which will either be Fordia or Gactos. And that's it for our spell cards. Let's move on to the traps. First up, We've got three copies of Battle Guard Howling. Again, this can be any number of traps or any different trap, but because this is a warrior-based deck and this is a warrior-based card, I figured I would include it. So when a warrior-type monster you control is targeted for an attack or by an opponent's monster effect, target one face-up monster your opponent controls and inflict damage to your opponent equal to the original attack of that face-up monster that you targeted with this card. And if you do, return it to the hand. And lastly, for our main deck and our trap cards, 
we have another hand trap, and that is infinite and permanence. This lets you target one face-up monster your opponent controls, negate its effects until the end of this turn, and then if this card was set before activation and is on the field at resolution, for the rest of this turn, all other spell or trap effects in this column are negated, and if you control no cards, you can activate this card from your hand. And that's it for our main deck, a full 40 card deck. Again, like I said, you can change it to suit however you want. But let's get on to the extra deck. So first up, we've got three copies of Goki the Power Lord. Power Load Ogre. This requires two plus warrior monsters and gains attack equal to the combined link rating of all other link monsters that you currently control times 200. And this linked summon card is unaffected by other cards' effects. And you contribute one Goki link monster, then target cards on the field up to its link rating and destroy them. You can only use this effect of Goki the Power Load Ogre once per turn. Next up, I have two copies of Nightmare Unicorn. This requires two plus monsters with different names. And if this card is Link Summoned, you can discard one card, then target one card on the field, and return it to the deck. Then, if this card was co-linked when this effect was activated, you can draw one card. And you can only use this effect of Nightmare Unicorn once per turn. And also, while any co-linked Nightmare Monsters are on the field, for your normal draw phase, you get to draw one extra card for each different card name among those co-linked Nightmare Monsters instead of just drawing one card. Lastly, for our Link package, I have two copies of Nightmare Phoenix, which requires two monsters with different names, and if this card is Link Summoned, you can discard one card, then target one spell or trap your opponent controls and destroy it. Then, if this card, is, er, card was co-linked when this effect was activated, you can draw one card, and you can only use the effect of Nightmare Phoenix once per turn, and co-linked monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. That's it for our link package. Let's move on with our extra deck. The one solo copy of Black Rose Dragon and our one and only synchro monster in the deck. This requires one tuner and one plus non-tuner monsters. And when this card is Synchro Summoned, you can destroy all cards on the field. Once per turn, you can banish one plant monster from your graveyard, then target one defense position monster that your opponent controls, and change that target to face-up attack position. And if you do, its attack becomes zero until the end of this turn. That's it for our Synchros. Let's move on to our Xyz. So I have the one copy of Digusto Emerald. This requires two level 4 monsters, and once per turn you can detach one material from this card, then activate one of these effects. You can either target three monsters in your graveyard and shuffle all three into the deck, then draw one card, or target one non-effect monster in your graveyard and special summon that target. Next up, we have the one copy of Tornado Dragon. This requires two level 4 monsters, and once per turn, quick effect, you can detach one material from this card, then target one spell or trap on the field and destroy it. Next up, we have the one copy of number 101, Silent Honor Arc. This requires two level 4 monsters, and you can detach two materials from this card, then target one special summoned monster that your opponent controls face in face-up attack position, and attach it to this card as material. You can only use this effect of number 101 Silent Honor Arc once per turn. And if this face-up card is on the field would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can detach one material from this card instead. Next up, we have one copy of Castell the Sky Blaster Musketeer. 
This requires two level four monsters, and you can only, er, sorry, you can detach one material from this card, then target one face-up monster on the field and change it to face-down defense position. You can detach two materials from this card, then target one other face-up card on the field and shuffle it into the deck. And you can only use one Castell the Sky Blaster Musketeer effect per turn, and only once that turn. Next up, we have the one copy of number 70, Malevolent Sin. This requires two level 4 monsters once again. And once per turn, you can detach one Xyz material from this card, then target one monster your opponent controls and banish it until your opponent's next standby phase. At the end of the damage step, if this card attacked, you can make this card gain 300 attack, and if you do, increase its rank by 3. Next up, we have the one copy of Gagaga Ga Ga Cowboy. This requires two level 4 monsters, and once per turn, you can detach one Xyz material from this card and apply this effect depending on this card's battle position. So if it's in attack position, uh, if this card attacks an opponent's monster this turn, it gains 1,000 attack, and the opponent's monster loses 500 attack during the damage step only. And if it's in defense position, you can inflict 800 damage to your opponent. Lastly, for our extra deck, we have the one copy of Divine Arsenal Double A Zeus Sky Thunder. This requires two level 12 monsters, but once per turn, if an Xyz monster battled this turn, you can also Xyz summon Divine Arsenal Double A Zeus Sky Thunder by using one Xyz monster you control as material, and you transfer the materials on that card to this card. Quick effect, you can detach two materials from this card and send all other cards on the field to the graveyard. Once per turn, if another card or cards you control is destroyed by battle, or an opponent's card effect, you can attach one card from your hand, deck, or extra deck to this card as material. And that rounds off our extra deck and this deck profile.